Howdy gang, how are you all doing? Hope you're all having a great week. Today I am going to show you some guitar mods all of you can do, some simple guitar modifications. And which guitar am I going to do it to? Da -da 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 -da! My Kypro! Yes, um, my Kypro DS uh, Deluxe, I think it's called, or Custom, I can't remember what it is. It'll be a DS Custom by the time. I am finished with it. Now, I adore this guitar. It is such a lovely, lovely instrument. It's beautifully made, uh, maple neck, and really, really high-end hardware, if you can see that. And, you know, custom-made pickups and parts and big brass block, etc., etc. But it's all chrome. It's chrome! <laughs> uh, which is no bad thing, you know. <laughs> It does look pretty good. It looks very, very sexy, this guitar. Anyways, I have had a plan to turn this into a rock monster um, for a while, so I am going to change the hardware out to um, all black. Um, the tuners, the control knobs, the, the jack, the strap buttons, and change the bridge as well to the Wilkinson uh, VS50 Mark II, which I've actually modified a little bit. But that's a an awesome bridge and I have a new set of pickups for this guitar as well. These pickups are amazing, they are custom made for the instrument but I have a set of Sir Doug Aldridge pickups to install on this guitar. And why did I go for them? Because they have triangle ears. <laughs> and I didn't want to go for the Marzio so that's why I went for the Sirs. Anyways, I'm going to show you exactly what to do and uh, what I have lined up for this and then we're going to get going and I'm going to show you how you can do this as well because it's really easy. Yeah. Let's get going. Let's do it man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Alrighty, first things first. This is the hardware that I have to replace the existing hardware. So I have a Wilkinson VS50 Mark II bridge um, which is awesome. I love using this bridge. It's on a few of my guitars including my Desert Island ESP Spirit Dance. At the bottom there you see a set of Sir Doug Aldrich pickups. Now this one I actually got on eBay pretty cheap <laughs> so um, I kind of got really lucky with uh, scoring this one which is a neck pickup. Uh, it says uh, DA neck on the back there. Anyways um, had to find another pickup for the bridge and I went for this uh, Doug Aldrich um, so pick up with the nickel cover and I'm gonna do something to this nickel cover before installing it because it is very shiny and um, I don't want it to be too shiny and then we got um, these awesome uh, Goto machine heads these are the magnum locking tuners they're really nice they uh, they were a little bit expensive but hey you know um, it's no big deal because I want this guitar to be awesomeness and um, just some uh, black hardware, you know, control pots, the um, uh, the actual uh, knobs, the jack plate, and um, locking strap buttons, which I'm going to install. And I have all my tools laid out as well, so that everything is at hand. So it's time to get going. First thing to do is strip the guitar down, take everything off it first, so that I can install all the new stuff. Let's do it. All right, so like I said, the first task is just to take all of the stuff off the guitar. So I'm going to take the strings off and then I'll remove the bridge, the um, control knobs and um, also the rest of the uh, little bits and pieces and um, also the tuners as well and uh, put them aside. When I'm doing this, I'm, I'm actually doing, uh, this is a yoga mat down here. These are great because they're gripping my dining table. Don't tell the wife. <laughs> and um, it's also going to grip the guitar when, when it's on there. It stays really stable and they're just beautiful to work on. So um, let's get going with that. I'm going to just uh, take the strings off first and um, I'll probably fast forward this so that you can see what I'm doing, but you know, it doesn't take like you know, 15 minutes <laughs> of video. Alrighty, here we go. So just a very quick note, when you're working on a guitar, which is, you know, just stunning 
be careful. <laughs> Don't rush it. You know, I've done this numerous times, so I'm kind of pretty confident with doing it, but you know, um, no point in rushing and making a mistake and getting a big scratch down your guitar or anything. So take your time. Check these out, these are the tuners which actually come on the Kuiper guitars, a little K on it. They're just beautiful, they're really, really beautifully made. But I'm putting an equally nice set of um, tuners back on, the Gotos. And they're black, yeah! Okay, final thing to deal with is the pickups. I'm just going to take them out and for that I have my gloves on because I have my soldering iron because I need to uh, unhook the uh, contacts at the back in the cavity here. And I don't like to cut them, I like to use the soldering iron. And if you've not used the soldering iron before, check out some videos uh, to find out how to use it properly and safely. Hence the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> We're guitar players, right? At the end of the day, we need to look after these guys. Our fingers are our friends. Alrighty, so it's pretty easy in a Kuiper guitar to actually um, see where the uh, contacts are. So I'm just going to unhook the, uh, the points which I need to and then take the pickups out. Now, before doing any soldering work around the cavity, I've put a cloth over the guitar body because I don't want any solder falling onto it and damaging the finish. So um, there's a little tip for you. I've just used some masking tape to actually put the cloth over it. And you can use a heavy cloth and you can even put a board under it. So I've just got this piece of cardboard and I'm gonna pop this under here and that's gonna protect the finish. So if anything falls on here and burns through the cloth, then it's not gonna burn through to the finish. And there you go, all done. So I'm just going to remove the pickups from the actual guitar now. And I'm just going to take this off for the time being. I can spend it. Next pickup out. And bridge pickup is out as well. So there you go guys, all stripped down. All the hardware is off. It's really like guitar now. <laughs> it's a gorgeous piece of wood though. It's mahogany and it has this nice thick maple cap on it, which is beautiful. And just really well made, you know, maple um, neck, which is roasted, ebony fretboard. So let's turn this into a rock monster now. Yeah! Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to do now is install the pickups. Now this pickup, the uh, bridge pickup, the uh, Doug Aldridge bridge pickup, I can only get in this shiny chrome cover or nickel cover and I wanted it to be brushed so um, quick YouTube search and watching a couple of videos and I figured out how to do it. I'm gonna make this into a brushed chrome pickup so I'm gonna do that first. Let's go do that. That's gonna be cool to do. Alrighty I got the pickup and I'm gonna use this sanding pad um, to actually create the brush finish and um, I've just got this spare trend block which is from another uh, bridge I have and I'm just going to use that just to keep everything neat it'll just keep it flat and straight so when I actually sand the cover and pickup it's um, going to be even and straight so let's get the pickup out it looks so cool take this plastic cover off it's nice and shiny and reflective. 
So I'm gonna make that brushed finish. The first thing I'm gonna do is just screw these screws right down so that they're not in the way because I wanna get a flat finish on the surface here. I'm just using a flat head screwdriver to do this. Well done. Alrighty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sanding block mount, or sanding pad I should say, put the uh, the trim block on it and just very very lightly start sanding over the top. I'm gonna use gloves as well. Now from what I saw on the YouTube videos, it's a good idea just to go in one direction. So I'm just going to go up and down on the pickup and I'm going to do this slowly and evenly. And just take my time over it. All I really want to do is take the sheen off this pickup cover. I'm just doing that a little bit and noticing it's actually getting brushed already, which is so cool. Alright, I'm going to carry on doing this. So this is progressing really nicely and uh, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but the side is really shiny. And the top is now slightly dulled, which is exactly what I wanted. It just has that nice brush finish. So I'm gonna carry on and finish off the sides and the top and the bottom. And then this will be ready to install. Yay! Check it out. It looks so cool. I really love the way it's come out. And this is the finish that I wanted. I couldn't find it. I couldn't, they, they didn't have stock of the uh, brush chrome one, so. I had to make myself a brush chrome pickup cover. It only took about 10 minutes. It looks great. I'm really pleased with this. So there you go. That's how you do it. Yeah. So this took a little bit longer than I expected because I had forgotten one thing. These are wider than regular pickups which meant that the cavity in the guitar was a tiny bit small. So um, I'll show you, I just had to route it a little bit just around the edges, just to take some of the finish off. Now, if you've not done this before, be careful. I've done it numerous times, so um, kind of, you know, I'm okay with using a Dremel tool to actually um, just widen the hole a little bit and get the pickup in. Now it fits perfectly, yay! So I'm gonna go get on with installing the pickups, or the bridge pickup, and then wiring everything up. So there's a little lesson as well. Learn from Aki J. <laughs> Make sure that the pickup actually fits your guitar. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> Anyways, I can do work to guitars, so I'm okay with kind of, you know, doing all that routing stuff. But if you haven't done it before, be very careful. If it's an expensive guitar, then have somebody do it so that it's done safely and you're not risking, you know, damaging the guitar or the finish or anything like that. All right, time to put this in the guitar. All right, now I know that this fits into the guitar. I'm just gonna put it onto the guitar. And I'm gonna put the screws in in a second, but check this out. How cool does that look? Yeah. I love that. This is gonna look so cool with the black hardware on it. Alright, I'm gonna put the screws into the pickup and then wire it up. So I've prepped all the wires which are to be connected and um, there's this snazzy little kind of circuit board type of thing in the Kypros which is awesome 
and um, it just makes wiring a little bit easier. When you're doing the wiring, check the wiring diagrams for the pickups that you buy because the colors do change. From my Sir pickups, the white and red are the coil um, colors, which means that I needed to uh, connect them together. And they're actually going to go to this little switch here, which is going to coil split them. And essentially what this does is when I switch it on, it connects this to the ground and that actually turns one of the coils off or it splits the coils or something like that anyways. Uh, then I've got the grounding wires which are green and plain and the live wire is black. So now you've got to figure out what the color code of your pickups is and it changes from kind of manufacturer to manufacturer. So I've got all of the, um, the wires ready for both pickups and I'm ready to wire. I'm gonna solder them in. And there you go, all done, all wired up. Alrighty, so that's probably the most difficult part of it done. Pickups are installed, they're all wired in, and now it's just the hardware. I think I'm gonna put the tuners on next. Yeah, let's do that, let's put the tuners on. So like I said previously, I have these Goto locking machine heads for this guitar. I splashed that a little bit, don't have to. You can get um, good machine heads for about 20 pounds, 25 pounds or that's that's around 30 35 bucks um, so you can chop around you know I just wanted to splash out because this is a really cool guitar it's a high-end guitar so I wanted to put a little bit of high-end hardware on there so these are staggered as well which means that the poles uh, on the actual tuners they um, shorten as they go up to the high E string and that means that I don't have to have a string tree on the headstock so I'm going to take these out the uh, the packet and um, let's get installing them. Wow, these are beautiful. They're really, really nice. Very, very cool machine heads. So as these are staggered, I've lined them up and I'm just going to eyeball them. And you know what? <laughs> they all seem to be the, um, the correct heights. Somehow managed to um, line them up in exactly the right order from the low E string to the high E string. Just by chance. Yay! Alright, just need to pop them on. So I've got the um, nuts here. And I'll do the screws later. I'll just pop these onto the guitar first. That is looking super cool, check that out. <laughs> yeah! Alright, so before I do the bolts a little bit tighter, I'm going to put the screws in because the, um, the ears of the tuners need to align with the screw holes and I need these to move around a little bit so that I can get the um, screws in the right place. Now, quick little tip, when you're putting these screws in, be really careful. Have the correct screwdriver and go easy on them. Make sure that the hole is drilled to the correct diameter because these can be threaded really quickly. So if it's the wrong bit, it can really mess up the screw very, very quickly. And I've done that probably a hundred times. <laughs> so I'm very careful with it now. Check that out. How cool do these look? <laughs> I absolutely love them. Love using locking tuners as well because they make string changes so quick and easy. All right, gonna flip it over and tighten these bolts. Again, when doing this, 
be careful not to over tighten. So I'm just gonna hand tighten. Now, like I said, don't over tighten because these things slip quite easily and then you get marks on the bolts, which uh, doesn't look very cool. There you go. Tudors are done. Yeah. Looking awesome. Let's put the rest of the hardware on. Next up, the jack plate and the locking strap buttons. All right, we're on the home straight now. So I just got to put the volume knobs, uh, the volume and tone knob onto the guitar and the bridge. So two more tasks to do. Actually, three more if I count the intonation, four more if I count the putting the strings on, <laughs> five more if I count the action as well. <laughs> Anyways, we'll get there. Only a couple more things to do. <laughs> All right, first these, just the volume knobs. These are just uh, screw on volume knobs. I, I like to use these metal dome knobs. So I'm going to use that, just get my screwdriver and what I like to do is line up the screw so that it's facing me when um, the, the control knob is on maximum. So that way I can judge where it is. So I'll do the same with the, uh, the volume knob here. So I'm just going to line it with my eye line. And this is making sure that the, the knob is on maximum. So my screw is here, where my screwdriver is. And that's it. Both of these are on. Yay! And now the bridge. Just gonna put the bridge on. So gonna pop the arm on because I may need that in order to just pull the bridge back when I'm installing it. Now before I do this, because of the finish, I'm just going to put some masking tape. And this is a couple of layers of masking tape, so it's quite thick. Just on the back and the front. Actually, I've got a little bit left, so I'm just going to pop this here. Just so that, you know, if I do kind of pull back on the bridge. It's not going to scratch the surface or anything like that. Before I install the bridge, a couple of little points. Now, when you're um, replacing bridges, you have to make sure that the um, distance between where the two pivot points um, rest is the same on both bridges if it's already installed. So. On my guitar it was, I think, 56 millimeters between the two poles. So I'm just using this very accurate rule to, uh, to measure. So it's 56. So I already knew that the Wilkinson bridge would fit because the spacing between the bottom and the top pivot points is 56 millimeters because I've installed a few of these in my time. Um, and you can also check the string distances as well. This one is uh, about 54 millimeters and this one is 54 millimeters. So it's the same. So even the string spread is gonna be the same across the, uh, the strings. So make sure you do that because you know what, if I had a Floyd Rose on this, then the poles would be further apart and I wouldn't be able to put this on unless I you know, um, redid the holes, re, um, uh, drilled, the, the holes, uh, fill the old ones, etc., etc., and put new pivot posts in. Um, if you do have a Floyd Rose and you want a kind of traditional type trim, just two-point trim like this, 
uh, without locking up then Shala do one called the uh, Shala Traditional which is a non-locking two point which I'm going to try on one of my guitars at some point actually. The other little tip is what you can also do is before installing the new bridge onto the guitar uh, what I did was I actually measured the height of the string saddles and then I replicated it across the six saddles on my new bridge. Now I know that this guitar was set up really well so I wanted to replicate that you know and essentially what this has done is it set this bridge up like this bridge was so when I drop this in it should um, be pretty much ready to go still need to do the intonation and stuff all right so ready to install the bridge I've got my three springs here and I'm gonna start with the middle spring so I'm gonna place my bridge and the bar is actually gonna allow me to actually hold the bridge in place while I do the work so I'm just going to flip the guitar up because I need to get to the back and when I do the first spring I'm going to need to hold the bridge in place because there's nothing holding it in place right now. So there you go, there's the first spring. And I'm going to make sure that the two pivot points are actually um, aligned with the, uh, the edge of the bridge and they are. And the tape basically just stops you know the bridge slipping and scratching and stuff all right let's do springs number two and three that's number two then i can flip it over carefully so that it doesn't slip and pop number three in as well i'm just gonna get the bar here There you go, bridge installed. Yeah, it is pivoting correctly. Yay. Alrighty. So I'm gonna leave the tape on for the time being. I'm just gonna string the guitar up first so that there's some, some tension on the bridge and it's pushing forward before I actually take the tape off because it can slip. Guitar's looking great by the way. <laughs> Yay, time to string it up. I'm just using a regular set of the Adario um, strings, which are unwinding here. That's okay. I'm actually going to unwind them all and just leave them in the loopings. Because I'm using locking chains here. All I need to do is pull the string through, make sure that it's in the nut, pull it tight, and then lock the tuner at the back. So this is the lock for the tuner. So I've just locked the string in place now. And there's no excess here, this is very little at the end. So I'm ready to Spin up my first string here. Yay! <laughs> I have sound. <laughs> so I'm not going to obviously tune it just yet because I need to get the other strings on. Before doing the other strings, I'm actually going to put the high E string on as well so there's tension on both sides of the bridge um, before I string up the whole bridge. And it's simply because I want to make sure that the, um, the bridge actually has, um, has pressure on both the pivot points. I've got the first two strings on, now what I'm going to do is feed all of the strings, the rest of the four strings, into the bridge before actually locking them um, onto the tuners. Um, it's just a quicker way for me to do it. The Darius are great because uh, they're color coded.
fuck with that. Tension on them and then stop tuning the guitar. Yay! Strings are on. Okay, I can take these off now. And it's in tune. It's not just yet. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm just gonna grab my tuner and uh, tune up the guitar now. Okay, so I've got my little TC electronic polytune clip here. I've just very quickly tuned the strings just by ear. Um, my ear is used to doing tuning quite often, so I can get an approximate tuning without the use of a tuner. But uh, um, I've done that, but I'm going to check it against the, uh, the tuner to make sure that the, uh, the tuning is correct now. I've got the first string, the uh, sixth string, pretty much dead on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm tuning to E flat, but the rest of the strings are a little bit um, uh, flat at the moment, so I need to do those. Now, once you tune the guitar, um, tune it again because, uh, especially with the floating bridge, uh, the tuning does go out because the bridge is being pulled forward. Um, the tension from the, the strings is actually pushing this this way. It's kind of like, you know grabbing the bar and pushing it down slightly so do that first of all so I'm going to check it again alrighty strings are in tune now what I'm going to do is detune them all yay so the reason I'm going to do this is the tuning stability of any guitar is going to be dependent on if the strings have been stretched because they're a piece of metal, they actually do um, stretch a little bit as you put them under tension. And so the string um, tuning goes out a little bit. So I'm going to show you the method that I use to you know, stretch the strings. It's going to put the guitar out of tune again, but that's okay because I'm going to retune it and it's going to be much more stable once I retune it. Okay, so to stretch the strings, first thing I'm going to do here is flip the guitar around because I find it more comfortable this way. and. Then I'm going to grab the bar and just push it backwards and I'm holding the strings down here you know, just in case one of them pops and breaks and I don't want it flying into my eye and then I'm going to do the other way and just shake it a little bit then I'm going to grab the strings I'm going to again hold the strings down here so I'm going to grab them and pull them up and this is going to stretch the string out it's going to put my guitar out of tune again but that's okay. I don't want to do that. I'm doing that on purpose. And then what I have a tendency of doing as well is just doing some basic vibrato on the strings. And this is all stretching the strings. So um, the, it's putting them out of tune, but it's also taking away that stretch so that when you do tune the guitar up for the final time and then play it, it stays stable. So let's check. It out. And it's all in tune, I've just tuned it again. 
And sounded pretty good. Except for the six string. That went out a little bit. <laughs> and it will, as you play it, it, the strings will still stretch out a little bit. So if that happens, then it's totally cool. You know, you can just retune the strings as you as you play it a little bit. All right, so while um, the guitar's still here, I'm just gonna check two things. I'm gonna check the intonation, which uh, I'll adjust via these, um, these saddles. Now the action, let's see, it actually feels pretty good. And that's because I basically just replicated the old bridge on this bridge. And so it just seems to have transferred really, really well. Jeez, it looks so cool, man. <laughs> All right. All right, for the intonation, um, what I'm going to do is play the string, make sure that it's in tune. Then I'm going to play the 12th fret of the string. And check if it's sharp or flat. I'm going to try it with the harmonic as well. Now this is showing that it's a tiny bit flat. So what I need to do to sharpen the string is shorten it, which means that I need to um, put this string saddle slightly closer to the edge of the bridge, this edge of the bridge where the pivot points are. So shortening the string um, sharpens the string and to make it make the string slightly flatter when you play the 12th fret you have to lengthen the string so you would move this away from the front edge of the bridge so i'm going to do that now i'm going to just adjust these and the wilkinson bridges are fantastic because they actually have a screw right in the back of each saddle which i can um, use a little allen key to actually um, adjust the uh, the length of um, the string or well the position of the the saddle so that my intonation is correct so what i'm going to do is undo this string saddle bolt here which is holding the saddle in place and locked into place and then what i can do with the screw at the back is just undo it a very very tiny bit so i'm going to go in increments of like quarter or half turns so i'm going to try that first of all i'm going to lock the string into place and check the intonation again and sometimes you know what you really do need just a tiny bit of adjustment so I'm going to reach in the string then check at the 12th fret again and now it's a tiny bit sharp so I need to actually lengthen the string a tiny bit so I'm gonna do that again now the Wilkinson bridge is really good because you can do this um, under some tension. You can actually uh, take the tension off the string which is the preferred method so I'm going to do that this time. So I've made the string floppy and I'm just going to do quarter turn, lock the saddle into place, retune, check at the 12th fret and it's all perfect, yay! So this one's done. So I'm just gonna carry on with the rest of these. I'll do that off camera because it's exactly the same process. All right, that's all done. The intonation is done. So I'm just gonna pop the, um, the trem plate back on the back of the guitar. So I'll flip it over. It's nice working on this, this mat because uh, it's protecting the guitar as well. I'm going to pop the screws in and then use my electric screwdriver to carefully screw them into place. There you go, it's all on. One final thing to do, I'm just going to quickly check the action of the guitar. It feels pretty good but I'm just going to use my um, notched straight edge check that the uh, truss rod is adjusted correctly. So to check the relief on the neck, I use this, which is a notch straight edge. And what this does, it has notches where the frets basically are. And I have two gauges on here, 25.5 and also 24.75 for Gibson scale. Um, so all I need to do is 
put this onto the guitar and then check what the relief is around the 12th fret. So I always look under the 12th fret, I'm just eyeballing it, and I can see that it's it's actually a little bit high. Um, the, uh, the relief is actually um, a little, little bit too much. Uh, what that means is the gap down here is a little bit too much for my liking. I like it to be a really tiny, tiny little bit because I find that the um, the action of the guitar is lower that way. Um, now, if you don't have a straight edge like this, you can still actually check the uh, the relief on the neck. And how I sometimes do this, if I don't have this at hand, is to actually hold the string at the first fret of the guitar. Then, using the little finger of my other hand, I'm gonna fret the 21st fret, and then. I'm just going to push the string down to 12 fret just to check the relief. It actually looks pretty good here. It's, um, it's not very, very high at all. Now I do that across the strings. And you know what? It is just a hit. So I'm just going to check it again. Is working at the moment. I might just leave it like that for the time being. I could straighten up the neck a tiny bit, um, and the gap that you want there is literally kind of if you have a very very thin pick. That's essentially you know how much of a relief I usually uh, leave. But it's dependent on you know the uh, how high you want the strings to be and things like that. So there are a couple of other considerations in it. And if I did need to adjust the truss rod, then. I would just get an appropriate allen key. My truss rod adjustment is on the headstock and I would tighten it or loosen it by literally an eighth or a quarter turn at a time. No massive kind of, you know, full turns or anything because it is quite sensitive and if you do it too much, that can snap, which isn't good. <laughs> so uh, if you do do that, be careful. Like I said, this seems pretty much um, uh, on point so I'm not going to adjust it just yet I'm going to play it for a couple of days and see how it feels and there you go all the mods done it took a little bit longer than I expected but you know that was because of the, the pickup cover on that bridge pickup you want to see the guitar let's go have a look at it <laughs> it looks so cool check this out Wow, doesn't that, that look good with the black tuners? And now with the Sir pickups, the black hardware, the Wilkinson bridge, that is looking like a rocking, rocking machine. Yeah, apologies for my fingers. <laughs> that looks so cool. I want to plug it in now. I want to plug in. I guess I better make some sounds with this. So check it out. And one more quick note before I play some tunes for you on that guitar, which is actually sounding really sweet. I've just plugged it in very quickly. It's sounding great. Anyways, here are the old parts which I have for the guitar and the spare parts from the new bridge. Now I always hang on to these because you know what? They can be useful in other guitars as well. So the locking tuners, they're very, very good. You know, if I need a set of chrome locking tuners on any of my, one of my guitars, then these are gonna go straight on there. And you know, the plates and things, the bridge is fantastic. Look at that huge brass block on it. And the pickups as well, they're super cool. These pickups are really nice. They're a different design, um, which uh, have their own resonance and tone and everything like that. So I have a set of pickups now as well, which I can use on a different guitar. So um, this is just a little tip for you. All right. You want to hear how this guitar sounds? I want to kind of play some stuff for you. So I'm going to head into the studio. So there you go, guys. Some simple modifications that pretty much anyone can do to a guitar. You know, I'm just replacing parts. Most of it was just, you know, um, taking it off and then bolting new parts on, which were just replacement parts. Um, just different color. <laughs> Basically wanted the hardware in black and um, it's made a difference. I love the way that guitar looks now. And the pickups are a little bit more involved. so. Like I said, if you're going to be doing work like that, especially routing work or dremeling work or anything like that, then if you haven't done it, practice first on something. You 
you know, which is just a scrap of wood or something. I took my time over it. I've done it numerous times. I've um, uh, routed out um, pickup uh, cavities and things like that and expanded them when I've needed to. So um, I'm pretty experienced at doing that. Um, or if you need to, take it to somebody so that they can install that part of it. But there you go. The guitar looks really, really cool. And those Sir pickups, I just, just want to play them. I have played them um, Aldrich pickups before, but you know what? I haven't played them in my guitar. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be cool. <laughs>